What's going on guys? Today I'll be teaching you on how to spray paint BMX parts. So in this tutorial I'll be spray painting my BMX cranks and BMX forks because the paint on there is in quite rough condition. There's some few chips here and there and I just want to give my bike a fresh look. So if you're watching this tutorial, the same steps can be applied on how to spray paint a bicycle frame. So for this job, you're going to need some paint stripper paintbrush, something to scrape the paint off, wax and grease remover, microfiber cloth, your primer, your paint, and your clear coat. I'm going to be using some Tremclad enamel paint because enamel paint can take more of a abuse I guess you could say. It's designed to take like hits so it's more durable than just regular spray paint. With that I got some Tremclad Clear and the paint is a 2-in-1 so primer and paint. Right here I got some sandpaper 220 grit and 400 grit sandpaper and just some paper towel. So when it comes to buying spray paint you're gonna wanna buy three of the same brand spray paint. It's just gonna prevent you from running into problems such as the paint wrinkling. Also you're gonna want to make sure that all three of your paints are either oil based or all water based. Personally I recommend oil based because it fights rust. So now once you have other stickers removed it's time to apply on the paint strip. So <clears throat> before you do this I'm not responsible for any injuries so do this at your so do this at your own risk when it comes to spray painting your bike parts. So once you have that down, it's time to apply the paint strip. So what you're going to want to do is get your paint stripper and make sure you have a glove on and just apply it on just as if you're painting. So it's been around 20 minutes and I've put three heavy coats of paint stripper and I guess it's time to scrape it off. So I tried a bit and it does scrape off. So you want to apply a bit of pressure but not too much and just like continuously scrape it off and you should get that so I'll get back to you guys once I'm finished the cranks and forks so just finished removing all the paint off the forks and cranks and what I highly recommend you guys to use is a wired brush it definitely speeds up the process when removing the paint so what I did was I applied a bit of paint stripper, very light coat, and in small circular motions, I scrubbed it and it took off pretty much all the paint. And same thing what I did with the cranks. So next we're just going to have to sand it down with 220 grit sandpaper and the next 400 grit sandpaper and then we're going to prep it for painting. So right here I have my fork that has no paint on it. And now it's time to sand it, so I'm going to get my 220 grit sandpaper and lightly sand it for around 5 minutes just to get any bumps on the surface from the old paint. After you're done with the 220 grit, you want to take your 400 grit and do the same thing. But except what you're going to do here is get rid of all the deep scratches and just like make it kind of a smooth surface for you to paint on. What I got here are all of my parts sanded down and what I'm going to do now is mask them up what I don't want paint painted so that is the steer tube and any kind of threads such as this and this you don't want to get painted. So first I'm going to clean them off with the grease and wax remover by Duplicolor and then after that I'm going to mask them off with some green masking tape and show you guys how it looks. So I just finished masking up all my parts, so I put the green tape around the steer tube. And what I did with the threads is I put some paper towel on them to cover it up. So I hung up my parts and what I got here is the grease and wax remover and I got my microfiber cloth also. So what I'm going to do is wipe it down once more and you want to make sure that you do not touch the surface because you have oil on your hands and it's going to react with the paint I guess you could say and you're not going to get as good of a finish so 
We're going to put on the grease and wax remover on the microfiber cloth, clean it off, and then we're going to paint it. So I'm ready to paint, and what you're going to want to know is make sure that the paint is mixed up really well. And you're going to want to paint in warm weather. You don't want to paint in cold weather or else the paint is not going to stick. Uh, also, you don't want it to be too windy or you don't want to paint when it's raining or else the paint's not going to dry up properly. So, first thing first is you're going to want to shake it up and just spray it in the air a couple of times. Make sure it's ready. So yeah, now we're ready for our first coat. So right now we're going to start our first coat. You want to make sure you stay at least 30 centimeters away, 30 to 40. That's about like 10 to 15 inches. It's our first coat, so you want it to be light, not heavy, or else you're going to run into problems such as the paint dripping. So yeah, that's pretty much my first coat. As you see, it's really light. There's still some like minor imperfections. Well, that's all right because it's only the first coat and what I did is just dust it lightly so it won't drip and so this paint sticks on later after the second coat and third coat. So right now we're going for our third coat and we're looking to get around 100% coverage, but if you don't have like full coverage you can always do a fourth coat or a fifth coat So after you're done painting, what you're going to want to do is wait three to four days. For me, I waited five days just because I wanted the paint to be fully dry. And after that, you're going to want to apply your clear coat. So what the clear coat's going to do is protect the paint from any scratches. So if you get a scratch on your fork with clear coat on, you're going to be able to buff it out. So that's the good thing about clear coat. And another thing is it's going to seal everything and protect it from rust. So you're going to want to make sure you put some clear coat on. And you're going to want to treat it just as if you're spray painting your forks or bars with normal paint. You're going to want to do light and even coats. I say around three to five light coats. So I finished applying on the clear coat and I waited roughly around three days. So when you finish doing the clear coat and you allow it to fully dry, you're going to recognize that the finish is not as smooth and there's tons of orange peel as you see here. And there's a way to remove it so I'm only going to be doing it to my fork, not my cranks. So let's start off with that. So to start off wet sanding, you're going to want to have a good amount of clear coat on your fork or frame if you're doing it and the first thing you're going to want to do is get your sanding block wrap it around the sandpaper have a warm bucket of water and every two slides you wet sand the fork or even your frame 
You're going to want to re-wet your sandpaper so it glides smoothly across the fork or frame. Also when wet sanding, you're not going to want to apply too much pressure or else you're going to get deep enough scratches that are not going to be able to buff out. So I just finished wet sanding. The more you wet sand, the better it will turn out and if you look closely, there's very little orange peel. And what we're going to do now is get your hard compound wax and you're just going to wax it all over the place until you get a solid black. So I just finished waxing up the fork, which I wet sanded. And I have to say it looks way better than not wet sanding it and polishing it. So this is the finish that I got after wet sanding it. You see there's no orange peel whatsoever. Obviously the more time you take into wet sanding it, the better it's going to turn out when you polish it. So here's a comparison to not wet sanding it. Well this crank doesn't look as bad but if you look here. You can definitely see the orange peel and how the surface doesn't look as smooth. So getting this finish on my fork took me roughly around 30 minutes and I have to say it's definitely worth it if you want your bike to look better. So that's the difference between wet sanding and not wet sanding. So this is the final product of spray painting my VMX forks and cranks. So. If you guys found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you have any questions regarding how to spray paint your BMX bike, please comment. I'm willing to help out. And yeah, if you guys want more videos regarding BMX things or even bike things, please subscribe. Definitely more videos to come this summer. Thanks for watching and peace.